You are a developer and you want to know how much time you spend coding. Or maybe you are a freelancer and you need a reliable way to measure the time you spend on a specific project so you can invoice your clients properly. Or yet, maybe you are a dev lead that wants to know how your team performs. Well, today I may have the tool for you, Waka Time. Hello everyone and welcome back to Coder Dave. Today we are going to review a tool that many developers use but not everyone knows, Waka Time. Before we start, let me say that Waka Time is not a sponsor on this video and I didn't receive any benefit or money from them. It's just a tool that I use and I find it useful, so I thought it's worth sharing. In fact, even though they have a paid version, you'll see I will use and review the free one and I recommend you to do the same unless you absolutely need one of the paid features. So what is Waka Time? It's basically a platform that integrates into your IDEs and other tools and lets you track and monitor how much time you spend coding. They have more than 50 plugins for the most popular IDEs and tools such as Visual Studio, VS Code, Sublime, Eclipse, SQL Server Studio, etc. And you can also integrate with GitHub um, Office 365 and other online platforms. So it's pretty comprehensive. When you type in your editor, Waka Time logs for you a bunch of things. First of all, it logs the editor you're using, so you can have uh, data about that. Then it logs the type of file you're working on, so you can understand if you're working on C Sharp, for example, Python, Java, SQL, and so on and so forth. And of course, no sensitive information are logged, so they don't log the actual content of the file, but just the file type. And all the plugins are open source. You can go and check on GitHub, so you can actually see what is logged, what is not logged, and how the whole process works. But enough talking, let's see this in action. This is the Wakatime dashboard. By default, it shows you the last seven days. And with the free plan, you can go back actually to 14 days, like here. If you'd ever decide to upgrade to a paid plan, you will be able to see the data since you started using this tool. In fact, all the data is preserved, it's just not shown in the free version. Let's see what we have here. Starting from the top left, we see the seven day uh, timeline with the different projects and the activity I made. You can see here, for example, that I total like five hours on Thursday, March the 26th, then 28 and 29, I didn't do anything. And then uh, 30, 31st and April 1st, that is today, uh, I had again some other contribution on the different projects. For example, if I look at today, I have two projects I've worked on, Azure Pipeline Decorative Samples for three hours and 20 minutes, and the Fast Track Support for about 26 minutes. If I look at yesterday instead, you can see that I have three projects I've worked on, this one for about an hour and 45 minutes. This is about half an hour and this 20 minutes. On the right, it's type of activity. In my case, all the activity is recorded as coding because I didn't configure anything else, but you can actually install the plugins to, you know, for example, Chrome or Edge, which allow you to uh, capture different kinds of activities like browsing, testing, and et cetera, et cetera. But I use it only for coding, so I only have codings in here. But I think it's still useful because I can see with a single glance the total coding time I have for a specific day. And then if I want to go into detail, I have this chart here, which allows me to go back and forth in the single days. And not only you can see how much time you spent for a specific project, like in this column here, but also when in the day you actually worked on that project. For example, I work on the project just in the afternoon here, and uh, all of this was, you know, around 2 p.m. But if I go to today, I can see that I have more activities because I started later in the morning and I finished just before recording this video. Then on the middle right, I have a daily average and it says that today I have about three hours and 47 minutes, which is about 5% increase on the daily average in total because it's about three hours and 36 minutes. As you can see, I haven't been very active lately. These are two of my favorite ones, the language and the editors. I start with the editors because it's a simple one in my case, I only use Visual Studio and VS Code, so 
I totaled about uh, 11 hours of Visual Studio and about seven hours roughly of VS Code. And on the left one instead, I can see for each language I work with, how much time I spent on those languages and the percentage compared to the others. As you can see, it's very clear that uh, I spent most of my time uh, using C Sharp, but also you know, all the other ones. And these data are gathered using the extension of the files I'm working on. So for example, if a file has a .cs, the system knows that it's a C Sharp file, YML, it's a YAML file and so on and so forth. Of course, those things are customizable, but so far I didn't have a, a need to customize because all the projects and all the files and languages I've been working with, they've been perfectly detected automatically. Scrolling down, we have the project list. And again, these are the projects I've been working on in the past seven days. And I can see the details of each of those. For example, if I take the one in the middle, the Azure Pipelines Decorator Samples, I can not only see that I've worked with this project for about five hours in over the last seven days, I can see what editor I use. For example, here I use only VS Code. I can see the languages that are part of my project, and I can see how the trend was over the time. One thing I really like is that if you actually connect GitHub to Waka time, you can see the single commits for each of those changes and actually how much time you spend on each of these single commits. So it's pretty powerful. If we go back to the dashboard, as I was saying before, you can always change the time frame, and with the free version, you can go back 14 days. So you can see that all the widgets, all the charts, and if I go down, also all the information and the projects are updated for the time frame. Another thing I quite like is this share button here, which is available in each project. And what it does is that whenever you click on it, it generates for you a link, which you can share with anyone you want. It's a public link. And these allow people to see your project details. For example, if I copy this and I open a new private window, and I paste the link. You can see this is a sort of public dashboard in which whoever has this link can go and see the details of this project. And this, for example, can be useful if, as I mentioned before, you're a freelancer and you wanna share the details of how you worked on a project with your clients, for example, then you can send these and they can take a look and see uh, what you're actually doing. Of course, if you don't want to share this with anyone, you just remove the link and this will disable it. And even if someone has that link, will not be able to access the information anymore. Let's move to another section of the product, which is the teams. Unfortunately, I don't have access to this section because it requires you to have the teams paid version, but I think it's still worthy to mention this because if you're part of a team or if you are a team lead, this is the section that allows you to monitor your team. And basically you just give access to the tool to your teammates and component of your team they can see their own stats, but also the team stats and everything goes in here. It's fairly similar to what the uh, individual dashboards are, but these are team focused. Let's move on on the project. It's very similar to what we've seen before, but it is not bound by a specific time frame. These are all the projects you've been working on since you started using Waka Time. As I mentioned before, if you integrate Waka Time with GitHub, you also can see the commits for a specific project. And again, we can access from here all the details for a specific project. One cool thing here is that you can see how much time you spent in total on a specific project since you started using the tool. One part I don't actually use, but may be cool to someone is the goals. So basically you can set some goal or some requirements for you in a project, in a language, in an editor or something like that. For example, let's say you want to code more in a specific language. Let's say you want to code more in Python and you want to code maybe one hour per day, except on Saturday and Sunday. And there you go. Now I don't code in Python. So of course the chart is completely empty. Let's for example, add a new one with something I actually use. So again, new goal, uh, let's say a language and let's say C sharp and let's finish. As you can see here, I can 
see how my trend is. In this case, I'm green because I code more than one hour, but yesterday I didn't code enough and so I did today. Something that instead I actually do use is the share. So there is four different options for sharing in Waka time. Actually five, because one is the single project dashboard that I show you before. The other four that you have here are the repo badges, the charts, email reports, and goals. I will not talk about goals because we've just seen it and basically you can just share it with someone else so they can also track your progress. Email reports, it's kind of self-explanatory. It's basically just a link to the profile section in which you have the emails notification and you can decide uh, what kind of notification and information you want to receive by email. And if you see here in the middle, I also have the goals subscriptions, which means that now that I created these two goals here, I will receive emails to let me know if I meet the goal or if I don't meet the goal or whatever I'm doing. But let's go back to our share. I think the two more interesting ones are the repo badges and the embeddable charts. Let me start with the repo badges. As you can see and as you can imagine, you can enable, like I did for this project, the repo badge. And when you do so, you actually have all the markdowns and other syntax that you can use for your projects. And this, if you want to see it in action, you can see it like here. It gives you directly on your repo the total time you spent on that specific project. I think it's pretty cool. The other one here, if we go back, is the embeddable charts. And also those are pretty cool ways to share data about your work and your languages, your editors, and so on and so forth. If you click on this, in fact, you can generate on the fly different kind of embeddable charts that you can easily share or embed in websites, social media, and you can even share a JSON format, as, as you can see. I've already created some embeddable charts, as you can see here, even though I use only a few of those. When you create a new embeddable chart, again, you can decide format. For example, I want to have an SVG, and let's say I want to have a chart of different editors I'm using. Let's stay with seven days because I cannot go with more days since I'm using the free version. Uh, you can change the colors. And of course, when you do so, oh, you need to mark this. And when you do so, you actually get the embeddable code for different platform. And I actually use that on my website. If I go over here, this is my personal website. And if I scroll down, you can see that I have here on this part, the coding activity for different languages and also the overall coding activity in the last seven days. So again, I think a pretty cool feature, which comes also in the free version, so you can use it straight away. And if you are a competitive person or you just want to relate yourself to others, they also have the leaderboards. There are two kinds of leaderboards, private and public. Private leaderboards are available only to pay subscribers, so I cannot show you, but the public leaderboards are available to everyone. And it's where you can see how you kind of relate to the other people. And of course you can search by name, but of course the user must be public or you can filter by language. Let's say for example, you want to see the leaderboard for Python. You just click on Python and you see the leaderboards filtered by Python users. The last two things I want to show you in here are integrations and supported IDE. As I mentioned many times already, the tools integrate with GitHub and other source provider like GitHub and Bitbucket. They have a preview for Slack and Office 365. When you do so, of course, as I, as I showed you, you can have more stats about your commits and so on and so forth inside your dashboards and projects. And they also have some other third-party integrations that you can use. Last but not least, let's talk about the supported IDEs. As I said before, they have more than 50 plugins available for integration with your IDEs and tools. And here is the list. As you can see, it's a pretty comprehensive one. We have Visual Studio, VS Code, Atom, Eclipse, Emacs, and as I mentioned, also tools that are not necessarily IDEs like Chrome or Notepad++. And if you click on any of those icons, you have the instruction on how you can integrate Waka Time with those specific IDEs. Most of the time, it's just a matter of install an extension and copy the key that Waka Times provide. Some other times, 
the procedure is slightly more complex. For example, for SQL Server, you need to download the extension and then make sure you have some keys changed in your registry and something like that. But in general, the integration is pretty simple. As you can see here, there are also some plugins that are grayed out. Those are plugins that are not yet developed or they are in preview. So if you click on the icon, you can actually leave your email to be notified as soon as these are released. And as it says here, you can also vote the plugin so they can reprioritize them based on the number of votes they received. One thing I mentioned here when talking about the integration with the IDEs and tools is the key. In fact, Waka Time provides you with a unique key that you use across all your tools and systems. To get the key, you just go to your profile and settings. And the first one you have is the secret API key. I'm not gonna show it to you, but this is how you get it. And you can copy it and use it in your plugins and IDEs. So this is Waka Time. I mainly use it for myself because I want to understand how much time I spend on a project or working with some specific language and tools. And also because to be honest, I really like metrics and stuff like that. So it's, it's the tool for me. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below if you're actually using Waka Time and what you think about that. Or maybe you use some other uh, third party tools that I'm not aware of and I would like to know. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much for joining me today and see you soon at Coder Dave.